Hey everyone, you know what's a channel I haven't taken a look at recently? Prager U. I wonder what they've been up to. I'm an astrophysicist at a major university. Science is my life. Wait a minute, why does he look so familiar? Have I responded to him before on a previous Prager U video? What does this guy teach? Oh, <gasps> wait a minute, I think I've actually taken one of his physics classes before, like 7 or 8 years ago, back when I was an undergraduate. No way, I must be remembering wrong. <laughs> okay, whatever, it doesn't change what I'm about to say. But when I hear somebody somberly intone, science says, or follow the science, I get very nervous. Science doesn't belong to any ideology. Science is the never-ending search for new knowledge. I concur, science does not belong to any ideology. However, I don't see anything wrong in using science to back up a position you hold. For example, I use science to back up my viewpoints that abortions should not be illegal. But I also make it clear that it is my position, not science's position. I use science to justify my claims, and I think that's a healthy way of saying science says. What's even better is if you can show sources for your claims instead of just saying science says. When people say that to me, it can be easy for me to debunk their claims because I'm pretty good at sniffing out bullshit. But for regular people, I encourage you to always ask for for sources. Anyway, for your second part, why would you get nervous when someone says follow the science? What's wrong with following the science? Everyone should be following the science. Everyone should be thinking in a scientific way. It's the best method we have to learning about the universe. When I hear follow the science, I don't interpret it as believe the results of science without thinking. I interpret it as use scientific thinking, read scientific studies, and utilize the scientific method to arrive at what has been found to be true. That's what science means in Latin, by the way. Knowledge. Not wisdom, not morality, not social policy. Knowledge. I don't think anyone would argue that point, although science is more accurately described as the method rather than the conclusions. And yeah, I don't think being more scientifically literate means you're more intelligent, but rather more educated in science specifically. Knowledge, it turns out, isn't so easy to come by. And sometimes what we think we know for certain, the Earth sure does look flat when we're standing on it, turns out not to be so certain. That's the prime example everyone always comes up with when they try to discredit science. Oh, science has gotten it wrong before when they thought the Earth was flat. Yeah, science is always evolving, not just the knowledge we obtain from it, but also the method itself. Back during the ancient times, we didn't have the same scientific method as we do now. What I can say for certain is that modern science is quite robust. It's the best method we have for finding truth, but it's not flawless. So sure, there are some things, usually on the side of theoretical stuff, where we could easily be wrong. But there are basic scientific findings that will always be correct. Again, it's the best method we have. Of course I trust in basic scientific truths, those things for which there is overwhelming evidence, like say, gravity, even that humans play a role in the warming of the planet. Oh no, oh no, oh no, Prager you, are you going to want to include that in the video? Seems to be contradictory to a bunch of videos you've released in the past. But scientists, even the best ones can get things wrong. The brilliant astrophysicist Sir Fred Hoyle believed the universe existed in a steady state forever and had no beginning. But his view, once held sacrosanct by all astrophysicists, no longer holds. It's been superseded by the Big Bang Theory that the universe had a beginning and is still expanding. Oh, that's something else Prager U seem to have forgotten to cut out. Looks like even they believe now that God didn't create the universe. Pity. So, we all need to get over this notion that just because someone, be it a politician, a bureaucrat, or even a scientist employs the phrase, science says, means whatever they're saying is right. It may not be right, but given the current findings, it is the most reasonable to believe. We can't go around doubting everything just because it could change. Like for example, smoking tobacco leads to an increased risk of lung cancer. Could that possibly be wrong in the future? Yeah, perhaps a 0.0000001% chance. But should we operate our lives under the assumption that it could change and therefore you can smoke however much you want without worrying about lung cancer? Absolutely not, because like I said before, this is the most reasonable conclusion given what we currently know, and we should not operate under the possibility that it could change. The only time that applies is if we acknowledge that there's a high likelihood of being wrong, such as certain concepts in theoretical physics which are not considered true until we find overwhelming evidence. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, just because it could change does not mean it will. The best practice is to follow our lives according to what we currently know. It might be right, but it might also be wrong. No, do not just present two possibilities as if they have equal probability. Of course, it depends on what scientific idea we are talking about, but I guarantee most people watching this video are going to use this to doubt whatever science they don't agree with. Climate change? That could be wrong. 50-50 chance. No, it's more like 97.3, thank you very much. When you're talking about something as important as believing in scientific findings, be very careful how you choose your words. 
It takes a lot to convince scientists to accept a new theory, especially if that new theory refutes what they had always believed. In some cases, what they'd stake their entire careers on. Scientists usually push back against new ideas that changes already accepted theories or laws, but that's not because they have staked their careers. Mostly it's because the idea that you're challenging is already so well established that you would have to provide even more evidence to overturn it. And it has been done before. But if you just come in and provide some silly bullshit and you're gated by either ignorance or stupidity such as the flat earth, then we're going to laugh at you. So how do we do good science? This is not a new question. Since the 17th century, scientists have employed the so-called scientific method to guide their work. It's not a perfect guide by any means, but it's pretty darn good. The method involves 1. Formulating a theory. 2. Predicting the evidence that should be found if the theory is true. 3. Collecting data. 4. Analyzing the data. 5. Refining the theory and presenting evidence to other experts. I think you also missed the peer-reviewing part and such, but maybe that's too detailed. The philosopher Karl Popper added one more item to this list. Popper said a subject is scientific if and only if it can be falsified. In other words, if your theory can't be tested, if it can't be proven wrong, it's probably not good science. Yep, that's a good one. Good scientific ideas and hypotheses must be falsifiable. Weird how there are many things we kinda sorta agree on. I wonder where you're going with this. This is just one reason why we have to be very careful about putting too much faith in models. They often can't be tested. Models are predictions of the future based on current data. They can easily get things wrong. First of all, the future, in case you hadn't noticed, is very hard to predict. What? I mean, that certainly is not the case for all models. At the end of the day, it depends on what you're looking at. If you test a model and it always makes accurate predictions, then we have tested it and it is falsifiable. Even models you can't test and is based on just scientific thinking. Then that's still falsifiable because when the future does roll around, you can see if the model has been right or not. Just because the opportunity hasn't appeared yet does not mean it is not falsifiable. I think you misunderstood what falsifiable means in this case. An unfalsifiable claim would be something like, a dancing spirit elephant created the universe and has has hit all evidence, so there's no way to disprove that claim. That's unfalsifiable. But if it's a model trying to predict the future, that's still falsifiable, because eventually we'll know if it's right or wrong, or we can run tests or whatnot. In addition, not all models try to predict the future. Again, depends on the model, but your general claim here is simply misleading. Second, the data may be incomplete, or even erroneous. Okay, that's ridiculous to even point out. If the data is incomplete or erroneous, then of course the model or scientific finding wouldn't be 100% accurate. That would raise questions on the procedures of producing scientific findings rather than the science itself. Of course, you'll always find scientists here and there manipulating data to some degree or cherry picking, but that doesn't speak for the entire scientific method. Science is never closed. If it was closed after Newton, you'd never have Einstein. Okay, so let me be clear. I agree with the statement that science is never closed. We should always be advancing our scientific knowledge. However, what I don't agree with is the context in which you release this video. We are currently in the middle of a global pandemic where people are dying because many are not listening to scientists. People are still having large gatherings, not getting vaccinated, not wearing masks because they distrust scientists. In the context of what is happening in the world at the moment, right now is not the time to be spreading the message of science might be wrong. It's dangerous and it's irresponsible and as a scientist yourself, you should know better. Secondly, consider the audience you're releasing this to. These are people who regularly watch as Prager you. These are people who have been fed the same idea that climate change is a hoax and creationism is real. They already lean towards distrust of science, and you are simply fueling the flame. No one is going to see your video as one that is giving you a better sense of what science is. They're going to interpret your video as science is untrustworthy, and that, in my humble opinion, is completely irresponsible. The message you send is not all that matters. The context matters too.